In this video, we're going to be learning some uh, trigonometric graphs. So we're going to be learning how to sketch trigonometric graphs. And in our ad math syllabus, we have three main graphs and they are sine, cos, and tan. Okay. So we're going to start from the basics. We're going to see what happens when you have some uh, basic graphs. And by that, I mean just sine x, cos x, and tan x. Okay. And then we're going to play around with them a little. Uh, we're going to add something. We're going to see what the effect of that is. We're going to multiply. We're going to subtract. And we're going to see what the effect of that is. So this is more of an introductory video, all right? Uh, we're going to cover a handful of examples in this also. And then we're going to look at the more complex ones. But that'll be in the next video, not in this video. And this you, video, uh, this concept is for you if you're an ad math student, of course. But also if you're an AS math student, okay, then also you can watch this video. You're going to benefit from it equally well, inshallah. Okay, <clears throat> so without wasting any more time, let's get straight to it. So here you have y is equals to sine x. Now, whenever you're sketching graphs, there's one thing that you will notice always, and that is you're always going to be given a range of x, okay? And you can see that over here that you provided with a range. Now, why is that? Because you got to know where exactly you need to start and where exactly you need to stop. So you're going to start from zero and you're going to stop at 360. And we're going to see what happens if you didn't stop at 360. What if you just kept on going, okay? And we're going to learn something with the help of that also. Okay, so you can probably see that I've made this table over here. And you may be wondering that why exactly have I taken values uh, from zero, uh, I mean, uh, by why exactly have I taken values with intervals of 90? Well, the case with sine and cos is that you take uh, the step that you take is 90, okay? So this is something that you need to remember and that is that with sine and cos, the step, we like to call this the natural step, okay? Now we'll see when this is not so natural, okay? Now we, we'll see what when is it that we need to change this step from 90 degrees to something else. But uh, as far as sine and cos are concerned, uh, you take the step to be 90 degrees, okay? <clears throat> so here's what you do. Now, there is a way through which you can uh, find out the corresponding y values straight away using your calculator. Okay, I've made a video on it. I will uh, give you guys a link to it. But in this, we're going to do things the old fashioned way. Okay, we're just going to plug in the values. Before doing any of that, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. If you're an ad math student or an AS math student, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, or just do a soft reset of your calculator. Okay, so that's just a good habit. Okay, so you're going to plug in sine zero. Okay, and you'll notice that the answer comes out to be zero. That means we have one point and that's right over here. And then if you plug in 90, you'll notice that the answer comes out to be one. So sine of 90 is equals to 1. And then if you plug in sine 180, the answer comes out to be 0 again. And then if you plug in sine 270, the answer comes out to be minus 1. And then if you plug in 360, the answer comes out to be 0 again. So this is what we get when we're making a sine curve. It's sort of like, um, you can say like a wave, okay? So you have like an up, and then it comes back down. And then let me just try and make it in one go so that I can just drag it around if needed. Okay, so there you go. So far, so good. Okay, yeah, not so bad. So this is what y equals to sine x looks like. Now, in the beginning, I asked, what if we didn't stop at 360, okay? Well, what if I want to take this even further, okay? In that case, what you'd notice is that you end up getting the same thing over and over again. So what you would get after 360, if you take values like 450, 540, 630, 720, so on and so forth, you would notice that what you're getting is basically a replica of what you got earlier, okay? And this, this cycle is what we call it. The next cycle would end at 720 degrees, okay? But that's not what we are supposed to do. This was just for your understanding. And with this, there's something that we end up finding out, something that we end up determining, and that is called the natural period. So natural period is basically the number of degrees uh, after which one cycle ends or the number of degrees after which a cycle starts to repeat. So the natural period we can see for sine is basically 360 degrees. I'm still not used to having this mic here, but yeah, anyway. So the natural period of sine is 360 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna erase this because this was just for your understanding. It's not something that you were asked to do anyway, okay? So yeah, and for 270, uh, I forgot to write, you get minus one and for 360, you get zero. Okay. All right. So that was sine. Okay. So it's important to keep the basic shape of the curve in mind because uh, we're going to be tweaking this as we go on. Okay. There's going to be a point where we're asked to do sine x plus one, sine x minus one. So for that, you need to have the basic shape of the curve in your mind. 
Okay, now let's see what happens with cost. So again, I'm gonna plug in, uh, I'm gonna find out what cost zero is. So you'd notice that cost zero is one, cost 90 is zero, cost 180 is minus one, cost of 270 is zero again, and cost 360 is one. Okay, now let's mark all these points and make a nice and smooth curve as we did earlier. Okay, so with cost, you get something like this. So it starts from one, goes to zero, starts to rise back up again. Whoops, sorry, it's supposed to be zero at 270. Yeah, so there you go, much better now. Okay, so at 180, it's minus one, at 270, it's zero again, and at 360, we are back at one. Okay, now, what would happen if you didn't stop at 360? As we saw earlier, what if we kept on going? So in that case, what you'd get is the exact same thing over and over again. And you just keep on getting it if you didn't stop, which is why we conclude with costs that the natural period with costs is also 360 degrees. And over here also, the natural, naturally the step that we take is 90 degrees. That means we, we were, even if we were asked to plug in values till let's say 720, so we'd keep on finding out Y values by after increasing X by 90 degrees. And the natural period that you have over here is equal to 360 degrees. So what's natural period again? Natural period is basically the number of degrees after which the cycle starts to repeat or the number of degrees after which you, um, or it takes for one cycle to complete, okay? But since you were not asked to schedule till 720, so we're gonna erase that and we're gonna bring it back to the way it was. Okay, so for sine and cos, things are pretty simple, okay? But with tan, things get slightly complicated, okay? Now, uh, so here we have y is equals to tan x and here you're asked to sketch it from zero to 360. Now you must have noticed uh, that I've left some spaces in between. That is because when you're making the graph of tan, what you do is the nat naturally that the step you take, the natural step in the case of tan is basically 45 degrees. So that means you plug in values in the function after every 45 degree interval, okay? So we start at zero and then the next value that we're gonna plug in is 45 and then 90 and then 135 and then 225 and then 315 and then 360, okay? So I'm gonna do that in my calculator and while I'm doing that, uh, there's something important that I wanna point out, okay? So just pay close attention. So when you plug in zero, you'll notice that tan zero is zero. When you plug in 45, you'll notice that tan 45 is equal to one. When you plug in 90, something really interesting happens. So when you plug in 90, what you end up getting is a math error, okay? So what does that mean? That means we have, we, we know that at zero, it's zero. We know that at 45, it's one. But what do I do about 90? How exactly do I show math error? So let's do one thing. Let's let's not worry about 90 so much. Let's find out what tan of 89 is, okay? So we're, trying, we're gonna try and pick up a trend over here. So tan 89, you can see is a fairly large value. It's 57.2 or something, okay? Now I want you guys to do this. Uh, tan 89.999, you'll notice that you're getting a very large value again, okay? Now try tan 89.99999, as many nines as you want. So what you'll notice is, that the value keeps on increasing, okay? And you're getting a, an extremely large value. Like for example, you can see over here that I have tan of 89 and a whole bunch of nines and I'm getting 500 and, uh, five, 57 million? Yeah, 57 million to, no wait, 520. Oh, I, I don't know, it's just a very large value, okay? It uh, doesn't matter. But the point is that at 90, it's infinity, but just before 90, the curve is pretty much alive and the values that you're getting are, are like fairly huge, okay? So, but at 90, it, it just goes to infinity. So how exactly do we show that on our graph? Okay, that's what the important question is. So at 90, what we draw is, we draw something called an asymptote, okay? And I know it sounds funny, okay? But an asymptote is basically, Asymptotes are basically infinite dotted lines, okay? Their, their purpose is to represent that the curve has gone to infinity, but it was pretty much alive before that particular value at which it went to infinity, okay? And that, that is 90 in this case, okay? Now let's fill up the table. At 135, you'll notice that you get minus one again. At 180, you get zero. Now let's let's pause here, okay? Let's, let's uh, draw this part of the curve because there's something I wanna show you guys, and then we'll draw the next part, okay? So, um, 
we have figured out that at 90, our curve goes to infinity, at zero, it's zero, at 45, it's one. So how exactly are you gonna draw that? So you gotta be uh, very smooth over here. And whoops, let's try that again. There you go. Okay, and we're gonna increase, I mean, we're gonna extend this dotted line like this, okay. Now, what happens after 90? We know at 135, it's minus one, but what about everything in between? Okay, so let's find out. So tan of 90.0001, you'll notice, or, or let's try tan 91, okay? Let's try tan 91. So you're getting a negative value, okay? And now let's try a value that's only slightly greater than 90. So maybe tan of 90.001. So again, you're getting a negative value, but it's extremely negative, okay? And the closer you bring it to 90, okay? but it has to be greater than 90. But the closer you bring it to 90, you'll notice that the more negative it is. So that means at 90, it goes to positive infinity, but right after 90, it starts from negative infinity. And at 135, which is gonna be right over here, it's minus one. So here's how this goes. And at 180, it's zero. I forgot to put a dot mark there, but yeah. So this is what the first, uh, I wouldn't say half, but this is what tan looks like from zero to 180. Now, what you'll notice from 180 degrees onwards, so if you plug in tan of 225, you'll notice that you get one. If you plug in tan of 270, you'll notice that you get infinity again. At 315, you get minus one, and at 360, you get zero again. So the reason why I, I stopped at 180 is because right after 180, what you get is nothing but a replica of what we just made, okay? So I can't copy paste this sadly because uh, it's just gonna get messed up. So let's just make it again. Let's not be too lazy. So at 225, we saw it's minus one. At 315, we saw, sorry, at 225, we saw it's positive one. At 315, we saw it's minus one. So this is how it's gonna start from 180. Here it goes. And this is how it's gonna start from 270 after 270. And this is where it ends, okay? Now with tan, what you guys, might have noticed is that one cycle ends after 180 degrees, which is why we conclude that the natural period is equal to 180 degrees, okay? So with tan, the natural period is equal to 180 degrees. That means after 180 degrees, the cycle starts to repeat. And if you notice how many cycles have we been able to accommodate in the given range of x, we've been able to accommodate two cycles. And why have we been able to do that? Because one cycle ended at 360. And since we were allowed, 180, sorry, one cycle ended at 180. And since we were allowed to go up till 360, so we could accommodate two cycles, okay? Okay, so this, these, these are the basic shapes of sine, cos, and tan. Now, one thing that I wanna point out is something called amplitude. And it's very, this is very important. Amplitude, theoretically, I mean, the formula for amplitude is basically the maximum value minus the minimum value upon two. Okay, and this holds for sine and cos only, okay? And I'll tell you why it doesn't hold for tan. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it somewhere over here. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna delete it from here. <clears throat> okay, now. As far as amplitude is concerned, now there are two ways through which you can determine the amplitude, okay? Either you can do it by looking at the graph, okay? So if I look at the graph of sine, I can see that the maximum value is one and the maximum value is, uh, maximum value is one and the minimum value is minus one. So I'll just do one minus minus one divided by two, okay? So one minus minus one. Let me just write that down, one minus, um, I mean, I know this is something you can do mentally, but I just wanna show how I've done it over here. So maximum minus minimum value divided by two, which gives us one. Now you may be thinking, did we really need the graph for this? And uh, you're right, you didn't. Why? Because when you're given the equation, so the term that you have just before the trigonometric function, and remember this is only for sine and cos, okay? So I should write over here that for sine and cos only, okay? So, uh, the amplitude of sine x is going to be one. Why? Because it's just one sine x, okay? And the amplitude for cos x is also going to be one because it's one cos x, okay? And if you're wondering, when is the amplitude not equal to one? Well, 
that's when it's two cos x, three cos x, or something else. Okay, so this is how this is how amplitude works. If you have if you have the trigonometric function right in front of you for sine and cos, you can look at you can look at it and determine what the amplitude is. Now there is a catch in that, and that is what if the value is negative? What if minus two? Uh, what if what if let's say it's um, minus two sine x? So in that case, is the amplitude minus two or is it two? So that's something that you'll have to wait. Uh, but just just uh, th that's that's something when we when we cover a few example questions i'll explain it then but for now this is what i want you guys to take away so the key takeaways from this part of the video is that uh for sine the natural period is 360 and you plug in values after every interval of 90 that is when you have sine x okay and uh then what about cos x exactly the same now one thing that i should mention over here is that Natural period and natural step is basically when the coefficient of x, which is basically the angle, is 1. So over here you had sine 1x, so that means the natural period is going to be 360, the natural step is going to be 90 degrees. And the same thing goes with cos also. And with tan also, we saw that the natural step that we take is 45 degrees, the natural period is equals to 180 degrees. When exactly do we need to alter this? That's something that we're going to find out in the coming videos. Okay, but for now, this is enough. So that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next part. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.